Hello again, everybody. My name is Bill Griffith. This is Ion San Diego, and old, young, or in between, we have something for you tonight. It's another Saturday night in San Diego, and many teenagers are about to head out for a nightclub like this one. Tonight, we'll look at a few of our non-alcoholic clubs and the people who go there. Then Mark Walton's off to the movies. Two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, Although it didn't start in the 50s, kids with slick back hair, leather coats, and cherry cars certainly made their presence known. And the 60s, they were no different. Long hair, Woodstock. Thoughts of peace for a world polluted, confused, and at war. Talking about very free and easy. Individuality, the one factor that transcends generations, to be different from any other generation before and hopefully after. It's in the look, the music, the attitude. It's this year's badge. The uniform that will not only distinguish, but also unify this almost instinctive drive to be different. It's the famous gap in generation gap, and it's prevailed for as long as there have been teenagers. Kids through the years, we've heard stories of the greasers of the 50s and songs about the 60s hippies. The Saturday Night Fever disco goers of the 70s are a very vivid memory, but folks, I'm here to tell you, it ain't like that no more. fail to realize that when they were kids, their parents were saying the exact same thing about them. Does ring a familiar bell, doesn't it? As in the past, for whatever reasons, our perceptions of the teenager are probably based on patchy information. But don't look twice, because today's trendy teens are privy to some pretty sophisticated nightlife, light years away from the antique sock hops their parents once haunted. There is no doubt about it, because um, in the 60s and 70s, once again, when we went to a dance in the school gym, that was great. That was the ultimate. However, nowadays, you're competing against movies like Flashdance, you're competing against MTV, and the kids know what they want. They want high technology, they want the best sound, the best lights, and they want the best video. And if you don't provide that in a nightclub environment, they're going to go elsewhere. Individual, yes. Eclectic, yes. But the funny thing is, there's really no collective name for this particular generation, unlike the hippies or the greasers of yesterday, where a specific look was preordained. Today, any form of teen chic works. Yeah, very broad. I mean, somebody could walk in with long, blonde, fair, faucet haircut and be at home, or somebody with a mohawk could come in and be at home, because so many people are so different. In the last decade, dozens of teen clubs have come and gone in San Diego. Since they don't serve alcohol, most make their money off the average $5 a head cover charge, and by staying open till the wee hours. These clubs let the kids do what they enjoy most, indulge themselves. No social issues or collective action here. It's everyone for himself. Let's face it, adolescence is not the easiest period in life. An adult body, a searching and sometimes confused mind, and the perpetual desire to be unrelentingly cool. Quite a balancing act at times. But just as we've learned from the past, under all that makeup and waxed hair, there are people, no matter what color the package. You, you cannot judge by appearances. Like I said, a lot of these kids, they go, go to their friend's house and they put on a lot of makeup, and they're inspired by MTV. When I talk to these kids, I see them every week. They're ASB presidents, they're cheerleaders, some of them are football players, they put on their mascara. And uh, only on the weekends, though, and their teammates don't know that. But they are basically good kids. Whether you dress like this, you know, whether your hair is long, whether your hair is short, whether your hair is, you know, brown, or whether your hair is green, you know? We're all, you know, we're all people, and, and you know, we just come here to have a good time.